Leif Garrett Special. With Leif's guests, Bob Hope. I've never been on a show hosted by someone so young. I didn't know whether to applaud or burp. <laughs> Marie Osmond. What I like about Leif is that he's young and handsome and very, very talented. And with all that going for him, I can't believe he's not one of my brothers. <laughs> Brooke Shields. I like a man like Leif because he's older than I. Of course, there aren't many men younger than I. <laughs> Special guest star, Flip Wilson. I've always found Lake to have a good head on his shoulders. Blonde, brunette, or redhead, he doesn't care. <laughs> Introducing Pink Lady. Ladies and gentlemen, your host. Good evening. My name is Leif Garrett, and it's a real pleasure for me to be able to spend this next hour with you and the talented people you've just met. You know, while we were putting the show together, I was always being teased about my age. But then I guess when you're 17, it's rather hard for some people to understand that I've been around for a long time. Well, it just so happens that I've been a performer for about 12 years now. You see, young people grow up faster nowadays. Well, I've been dating professionally since I was 11. 
Bachelorette number one. I hope you're pretty, delicate, know how to cook, a million laughs, a little sexy, and generally know how to make guys happy. Just like my mom. <laughs> um, in what ways do you hope I'm just like your dad? I want you to be my, like my dad because he's a doctor and I like people who operate. And I hope you operate with me a lot. <laughs> If there's one thing that's typical of all young people, it's that we're curious. And if we're ever asked, we can offer some very interesting solutions. Hey, Dad? Yeah? I've decided I'd like to raise some white mice temporarily. What do you mean, temporarily? Well, I mean, I think it'd be a good thing for me to do until I get old enough to get interested in sex. <laughs> but every so often, I have to admit that we don't know as much as we think we know. Well. Finally, I grew up and developed a sense of purpose. Took my mind off of frivolous things like sex and decided I want to become a professional singer. Now, here I am at 12 doing a screen test for a movie called Mame with Miss Lucille Ball. You're my best girl and nothing you do is wrong. I'm proud you belong to me. Let them tease us about being young. Personally, I'm enjoying it. So why don't you join us for the next hour, and who knows? Maybe I'll grow a little older, and you'll grow a little younger. Ladies and gentlemen, now get set for a very special treat. I'm about to present a man who has been a legend in the music business for years and years. His original 78 records are almost impossible to come by. They're owned by only a handful of collectors. Now, I hired some detectives to see if they could find him. It took them over three months. But they finally tracked him down washing dishes in a small diner in Tailgate, Texas. Now, he's here with us tonight. May I present to you, for the first time on television, the legendary bluesman, Mr. Howlin' Dog Hope. You like it? They settled with Spike Jones' estate. <laughs> Are you afraid of having your horn stolen? Oh, oh with this here? No, no. That's my shopping bag I'm worried about. Good shopping bags are hard to come by these days. <laughs> well, I cannot tell you, Howard Dog, what a real honor it is to have you on my show. Aren't I can you? understand it. <laughs> how long has it been since you last played in the public? Oh, it must be about 34 years. Oh, well, how come? I lost my mouthpiece. <laughs> Swallowed, in fact. <laughs> Well, why do you call yourself Howlin' Dog? Well, my real name's Priscilla. <laughs> well, speaking of names, I understand it is a tradition among bluesmen to give their instruments a name. That's true, that's does, true. Does yours have a name? I call that baby Carl Malden. <laughs> why is that? I never leave home without it. <laughs> yeah. well, what's the first band you ever played in? Oh, that was a reform school. That was the Al Capone Society Orchestra and Escape Committee. <laughs> Hot group. <laughs> you must have grown up in a really tough neighborhood. Yeah, you can say that again. Anybody with teeth was a coward. <laughs> we used to play games like Kick the Cop and Sandlot Muggin. That is tough. Yeah, it's tough. In school, the three R's were reading, writing, and ransacking. <laughs> Whenever we were bad, the teacher used to make us go hang in the corner. <laughs> for hours. I ain't there, baby. <laughs> what was your, your first professional job? Well, I worked at a strip joint on Bourbon Street in New Orleans and was the owner cheap. Cheap, huh? Oh, he was so cheap, the stripper and the bass player had to use the same G-string. <laughs> they had to stretch it a little for her. <laughs> what was the steadiest musical job you ever had? Oh, steadiest music. I was flower girl for Mickey Rooney's wedding reception. <laughs> That's the best job ever. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hmm. When was the last time you made a record? Last time. Uh, are they still square? <laughs> well, 
I understand a lot of record producers used to pay musicians in booze instead of money. Right on. That's right. Right, 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 right. Well, it's too bad you didn't have a union then. Well, we did. Oh, yes. A regular, uh, regular uh, recording session was an eight-bottle minimum with a jug and a half of overtime. <laughs> uh, if your record went over a million, you got a gold six-pack. <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, the time and money we spent tracking down the legendary bluesman, well, it was well worth it. Because tonight... Tell him about it, son. Tell him about it. <laughs> Baby, yeah. <laughs> you are going to witness the musical event of the age. Brace yourselves now. Here he is, the legendary Howlin' Dog Hope. It's perfect. Wait, wait. That's, no, wait, hold it. I'm sorry, Howlin' Dog. That's quite all right. We've had enough time. Hey, it's enough. Cut. Stop. Priscilla, stop. <laughs> When a singer isn't singing, he's just like anyone else. Chances are he's listening to another singer sing. And that's what Leif's doing right now, listening to some songs. Some new ones, some old ones, some good ones, and oh. some that aren't so good. <laughs> but Leif's a pretty lucky guy. You see, he finds the ones that are good more often than a lot of singers do. Do you uh, hear anything you like? That's what I thought. You know, there are a lot of great songs around, but you really have to hunt to find the one that's, that's just right for you. Oh, hi, Marie. Hello. <laughs> you know, there are really a lot of great songs around, but you have to hunt to find the one that's just right for you. <laughs> Beautifully put. You know, I don't think they're writing songs like they used to three or four months ago. Oh, sure they are. I mean, there's lots of great songs being written right now. I mean, if you don't mind my saying so, you'll never hear good music if you stay in your room and expect it to find you. I guess you're right. <laughs> Believe me, I mean, you ought to get out more. Find out what, what life's all about and visit some really hot places. I don't think we have time tonight to go to Utah. <laughs> That's not quite what I meant. But listen, I'll tell you what. Let's, uh, you and me visit a few places right now. See what's going on in the uh, world of music. Okay. You know, I really appreciate this, Marie. It's not every singer to help another one out. Oh, hey, don't mention it. Come on, uh, why don't you comb your hair and we'll go. It is calm. <laughs> well, let's go anyway. Okay. I never realized that one song could come back to me like that and haunt me. Well. And so now, here's another big hit. I was made to bulk up a one and a two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, 
The late Garrett special will continue in a moment. But I promised to do this interview with Billy Cool, and this is the only time he could fit me in. It's a small station, but I always enjoy talking, doing interviews, and answering questions no matter where. So, just listen for a minute to Billy Cool, and I'll be right there. Okay, our guest tonight is Leif Garrett, a young singing sensation. Come on in, Leif, and make yourself comfortable. Hey, you got your natural with you, huh, my man? Yeah, but so for brother. Here's a little gift, old brother. Yeah, yeah, use it. Good to we'll get to the interview in a minute, folks. But first, this message from Hi-Fi Harry with 12 locations within the sound of my voice. Harry's annual clearance sale begins tonight at midnight and lasts until 1 a.m. It's a great chance, friends, to pick up that new turntable you've been wanting. And Hi-Fi Harry's got a great one for you for only $24.95. Okay, you're listening to Billy Cool here on FM 99. Hey, about to meet... The young singing sensation, Leif Garrett. Hey, my main man, look good, brother. And I've got a lot of questions for him about his rise to the top of the pop world. But before we start, I want to remind you that all of your records and tapes, including our guest, Leif Garrett, <laughs> will sound better if you get on down to Electronic Eddie's warehouse and pick up a new amplifier. Oh, boy, Eddie's got a great one. A full 15 watts of power, especially priced tonight. Only at Eddie's low, low price of only $29. Yes, he had. That's so we're going to open the phone lines now and let you call in with your questions. Now, before we open the lines here on FM 99, where there's always a superstar on Billy Koo's show, let's take time out for a station break. Ah, boy. Leif, uh, 
I want to say thanks a lot for doing this. It's guys like you that put guys like me where I am. And you're doing a great job, man. Just relax and say whatever comes to your mind, because that's the kind of show I run. You're all right, my man. We really dig it. OK, friends, we're rolling into the second hour with the very popular Leaf Garrett here on FM 99, and where the words are good and the sounds are mellow all night long. And right now, friends, we're talking to Leif Garrett about everything he has on his mind. And how about what's on your mind? Give us a call here at FM 99. Get tight and get it all out. Billy Cool loved you, and you've got a new friend right here in Leif Garrett, my main man. If lines are busy, just hang in there, and we'll be with you as soon as we can. In the meantime, instead of sitting there with a busy signal, why don't you hop on down and get yourself something good to eat at Freddy's House of Pork? Yes, uh, Freddy's is open all night, every night, with lots of free parking down the alley. That's Freddy's House of Pork, a half mile past the airport on State Route 29, right next to Augie's Audio. You're in tune with the sounds of the night here on Billy Cool's show. And right now, we have to say goodbye to tonight's guest, Leif Garrett. Leif, the man, it was a pleasure having you here. Right on. Okay, we took time out from his busy schedule to come on down to the studio and lay this heavy interview on us. Yes, sir, he's a great guy and just one of the many fabulous guests Billy Cool has for you in the weeks ahead. Now, before we get back to the show, let me tell you about some great new eating places here in town. Check Eunice. <laughs> During rehearsals, Marie asked me why fans only seem to go crazy over male pop stars and why female singers never seem to get that same kind of hysterical response. Well, there are two ladies who have turned their entire country of Japan into a screaming basket case. And here's a sample of what I mean. That was great. Thank you. Really, I, I have to say that you're both so beautiful. Thank you. I'm so impressed that you can sing that in another language. Thank you. I want to know, could you teach me something to say in Japanese? What does that mean? Thank you! <laughs> Big lady. behaving strangely. After all, if you were put in a room full of funny hats and false noses, wouldn't you want to try them on? Of course you would. In fact, I think some of you did. But that's okay. Everybody loves to play dress up. The only difference is that Leif and I are among the lucky ones. We get to do it for a living. <laughs> you never look better. Oh, thank you. Care to try a nose? the real world. <laughs> no, thanks. But I really love your wig. It's really funny. It's not a wig. That's my hair. <laughs> That's even funnier. <laughs> well, you know, Brooke, we've both been acting for a long time. Shakespeare's always been my favorite. Well, we can do that right now. Do what? We'll play Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. You know, we were about the ages that Shakespeare had in mind when he wrote it, so it'd be perfect. Yeah, and it's a classic love story of all times. Let's do it. Okay. Romeo. Juliet. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Ah, uh, she speaks. My lady speaketh. Forsooth, I am the fairest maiden in all Verona, and he the handsomest lad. Ah, uh, verily, that is true. It is true. Ah, <laughs> uh, Juliet, my love, would thou not come down here that we may gaze upon each other's beauty? Alas, Romeo, I dare not. Why dost thou not come up here instead? Ah, uh, yes. Juliet, my love, we will sip a joyous cup of mead together in celebration of our love. A cup of mead? An alcoholic beverage? Thou know full well that lips that touch liquor shall never touch mine. Cancel the mead. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, my love, we shall drink in thy beauty instead. Stay, my love, while the coast is clear. Ah, uh, yes. But does remind me of the time that I sent to the balcony of the most beautiful Maria Teresa in Naples. Maria Teresa? Oh. And then there was in Venice, 
They left Angela on the gondola. Angela? Mm. Or was it the gondola and in the Angela? <laughs> and it was Gwendolyn. Ah, yes. Gwendolyn? Yeah. Ah! The people would never buy Romeo and Gwendolyn. How doggy it's hot. If and I didn't have all this haying to do, I'd be down by the creek plucking a chicken. Say, miss, did you tell me I get to the highway? Well, I can tell you what I'd do if and I wanted to get to the highway. What's that? I'd ask somebody else. Say, is your name Julie May? Maybe, maybe not. Aren't you little Julie May who I sat next to in the first grade before I moved to the city and made my fortune? Maybe, maybe not. Aren't you little Julie May, the most beautiful, the sweetest, the most wonderful girl in the whole Midwest? Now that you put it that way, I surely am. Uh, you don't know how happy I am. I've been searching these parts for five years, meeting hundreds of beautiful girls. Boy, some of them were knockouts, too. <laughs> Boy, those twins right out of Sioux City? Mm. Oh, and that all-girls band in Iowa. And that short order cook in Des Moines. Boy, did she have a set of flapjacks. Oh, and how can I forget that lady auto mechanic? Boy, did she charge my battery. And, and Kitty from Kansas City! Next. Where's the next singer? We're ready to record and he's late. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. I had to pick up my 10 platinum records, my Oscar, my Tony, my Grammy, my Emmy, and then I'd polish up my star on Hollywood Boulevard, you know? May we begin? Sure, I'm ready. Okay, you guys in the band. I want it down, I want it dirty, and I want the rhythm right out in front, okay? We'll pick it up um, right after the sax solo. All right, roll tape. You know the song you just cut? It hit number one. That's fantastic. With a bullet. But you being so beautiful is what did it. My last record took twice as long to hit number one. I just sing to John Belushi. Do you want to hear the playback? No. Let's go someplace we can be alone. How about my place? You'd love it. Oh? Huh? It's on the 30th floor, overlooking the park. I know that building. You've been there? Oh, yeah, many times. Linda lives there. Linda who? Ronstadt on the 10th. <laughs> Marie on the 6th. Oh, that's Dolly Parton on the 19th and on the 20th. <laughs> Pointer Sisters on the 5th and then Livy on the 11th. Oh! Right on his Oscar. <laughs> Thank you. 
Continuing the spirit of presenting young performers on the show, I would like you to meet my new discovery, Mr. Bob Hope. Here again is Leif Garrett. Yeah. 
school if you want me to. <laughs> can I, wait, can I, can I teach you? I heard you the other night on Billy the Cool Show, and you were too much. Oh, yeah? It's a pleasure to be here today, and you're the greatest, like, teasing me too much. What are, you, what are you doing tonight? Can I, can I take you on a what, date? Uh, <laughs> what killer? Would you, go, would you go out with me? Of course. You go out with me? I go out with you. Tonight? Yeah. Beginning Sunday, blind ambition. He was President Nixon's lawyer. What dark secret threatened his career, his marriage, even his life? Blind ambition, starting Sunday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Now stay tuned for the Dukes of Hazard next.